Welcome to a new video everybody. Today we're going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for quite a little while now. We're going to be replacing the stock horns on the Optima with some Hella Supertone horns. Let's go ahead and take a look at them and see what all we'll need to get them installed on the car. Alrighty, so here's everything that comes inside of this kit. We've got a 300 hertz and a 500 hertz supertone horn, and then we've got a relay down here. Now, these aren't absolutely necessary, but they are recommended. It's basically acting as your surge protector so that you don't have voltage spikes going from your battery to the horns, or when you take your hand off of the horn on the wheel that you're not having a voltage spike from the horns back to the battery that may fry something. So I went ahead and picked up a wiring harness that has a relay already pre-wired into it and then it's also actually got its own fuse down in there. I can't really see it just yet. Once uh, we cut this open we'll go ahead and take a better look at it. But yeah so that's why you want to use a relay. It's basically going to save you from voltage spikes. You may see people installing it without this and well you can do that but you may run into issues with your battery or with the mod that you're doing at the time if you don't use one so let's go ahead and get these bad boys installed if you look at the front of these horns you can actually see which one is the low tone and which one is the high tone they have an H and an L on them now when we put these new horns in it's not going to matter where the high or the low is you can change those willingly and actually it's funny if you look there you can see that these are compatible with Hyundai or Kia so we've first got to disengage these you're gonna stick your hand in here and pinch this clip until you see that little guy pop up and then pull out the back and now if you notice we have this type of connector we're actually going to be cutting one of these off to one of these two and using this wire later uh, so don't worry if you see this type of connector and look on the back of the horns and see the uh, little blade prongs we'll talk about that here in just a minute Now for the actual install, we have to figure out where to mount these things. A lot of kits you'll see will come with a bracket so that you can actually install it here where the hood latch release is, but unfortunately with our model of Optima, you can see there's a guard to where we can't get to the bolt down there. But luckily, if we go ahead and move the bumper forward a little bit, you can see that we've got two metal brackets here on each side, and that's exactly where I want to go ahead and hang the horns. Now looking at these brackets and the back of our horn, you can see that that orientation isn't going to work. So what I did was I went ahead and went down to the hardware store and picked up some L brackets and I went ahead and just lopped off half of this side. And we're actually going to put it just up under here like that so that it's going to hold the horn down there in front of our radiator. Here's what the horn looks like with the L bracket attached. We went ahead and just got a regular old bolt and a locking nut so that the vibrations don't loosen them when we're driving down the road. And like I said, we're just going to install it right down here like this. But before we install these, I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay out the wiring and uh, do what I need to do for those wires. Alrighty, so I went ahead and just put the horns into the slots for now so that I could see how far the wiring is going to go. I went ahead and put the relay back over here. It's actually going to kind of hide here where this piece of plastic is and then snake the wiring through here. Now I'm actually going to be cleaning up a lot of this right here with some uh, black tubing that I have. Kind of the same stuff that's going along here. And then I'm going to be zip tying the rest of the cabling up to here and then I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with this wire. All 
Alrighty, now that we've got the wires in the approximate positions of where the horns are going to sit, we need to go ahead and take care of this wire right here. Now this is what's considered the trigger wire. It's going to actually snake up through here, across, and to this top wire is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to lop this off right here and use some extra length of wire and some connectors to go ahead and bridge that gap right there. Now it's called the trigger wire because it's what connects the button on your steering wheel through the fuse box all the way down through to the main horns. If you connected these horns just directly to the power and the ground and then that to the battery, the horns would just constantly go off because there's no actual trigger mechanism. So let's go ahead and get this wired up. Now that we've got the extra lengths of wire attached and run through to where our trigger is going to be, we can cut this off. But we need to make sure that we're paying attention to which wire is what color. The black here is going to go to the black there. And then this here, this green one, and it's actually kind of hard to see, but it's got an orange stripe running through. That's going to go to our red and be the power. That's what's actually snaking through all the way through the bottom there and going to the fuse box. Alrighty, now we've got our extra wire run and crimped to the trigger. So I went ahead and put the horns back on. We're going to connect the power and ground to each one and then the power and ground or ground and then power to the battery and test them and make sure they work. One quick thing with these horns, I've seen a lot of people say that if you're looking at the back of the horn, the terminal on the left side is supposed to be the positive and then the right side is the negative or ground. But then I've seen other videos where people are saying it doesn't matter as long as you wire up the horns the same way. But to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and put the positive on this left piece here or the side that's upmost to me. And then the negative is going to be that one on the right or the bottommost side. Here you can see I've got the red wire going to the top and the black wire on the bottom. And then again over here, red wire on top, black wire on bottom, like I was saying just a second ago. Now that we're ready to connect these to the battery terminals, we're gonna go ahead and take the positive or power off first so that if there's a short, the short will go to ground. And again, this battery, if you don't remember from one of my other videos, if you didn't see it, this is a grounded battery, as you can see right there. It's grounded, so we've used it before as our ground, and that's actually what we're gonna use again. So let's go ahead and take these off. Now that we've got all the wiring finished and the horns in place for the most part, we're gonna go ahead and check them before we close everything up and see how they compare to our stock horns. Oh man, these things are for sure loud. Now we're going to finish up zip tying all of our cables and I'm actually going to be attaching the bolt onto the top here through this hole and there's like a little dress up uh, washer kind of like here that's red to kind of match all of my other red. But let's go ahead and get all that taken care of and we will be done. It's also a good idea to go ahead and put some electrical tape around the connectors where you splice the wires to further weatherproof them. Alrighty everybody, we've got everything put back into its proper place. I wasn't able to clean up as much of this wiring down here as I wanted to, but I will be going back with some more of this hose eventually and cleaning up all that. The reason I wanted to go ahead and get these two is because it goes along the top of the radiator hose right there, and I don't want that to get, you know, hot and melt any of the wiring. And taking a step back and looking at the front of the car, it looks amazing. These definitely add some more pop to the front end, and it really goes well with the red and black that I've got all over the rest of the car. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out the video. If you have any questions about the install, please let me know in the comments down below. I'll be leaving links in the description down below as well for all of the parts that I used in the video if you want to go ahead and get this for your car as well. Again, thank you guys so, so much for stopping by and checking out my videos. I hope to see you in the next one.